That's a big box. Pickle jar, pickle jar, miniatures, excellent! So, when the lovely people over at Anchor asked if they could send me out the new Anchor Make M5C FDM printer, I was a little bit skeptical at first. FDM printing is not something that I've actually tried myself and it's very different to the printing that I have done. I have a very sort of up and down relationship with 3D printing going from it being absolutely amazing to being a complete faff. So the idea of learning a new material to print in, a new printer, it was just a little bit off putting. With all that being said though, the M5C that I've been sent is touted as being built from the ground up with beginners in mind. So I figured if I'm going to have a go at FDM printing, let's try this out and see if it's as beginner friendly as they say it is. Okay, so first impressions. I am massively impressed. One of the reasons why I've been sort of put off trying FDM printers in the past has been the sort of assembly. Uh, FDM printers, obviously I've seen that you have to construct them, put stuff together, and it's always put me off because I'm not, I'm not that technically minded in that kind of way. However, this went together really easily. It was all packaged absolutely fantastically in the box. Um, like really, really nice and secure. Putting it together was literally a case of, I think 12 screws and then three cables that needed plugging in. That was it. Um, and it is now ready to set up and to sort of sort the build plate, level that, make sure that that's ready, get it all sort of calibrated. And then we can try doing some printing. I'm actually quite excited. Um, this is, this is something completely new for me. I've never done FDM printing before and I'm really, really eager to get this working and to see what it can do. I took the printer upstairs and started getting it set up and once I'd got over laughing at the size of the instruction manual and feeling like I was in a little Britain sketch, I started getting it calibrated and set up ready for some printing. So, should now be able to turn this on. Sounds promising. I'm assuming that was a good beep. <laughs> so, add printer. Press the button once on the printer you want to connect to. Oh, now I need to get my Wi-Fi password. <sighs> Once I've got the Wi-Fi connected, I got the filament installed, which was nice and simple, a lot easier than I thought it was going to be for some reason. And then I actually set a print off from my phone. Um, this was mind blowing. I just went on my phone, looked at the sort of browse feature on there, found the Benji model that everyone prints off as their test model. And this printed in about 16, 17 minutes. And I'm, pretty blown away actually like yes you can see layer lines it's fdm there's no getting around that but this was the point where i finally started to see what was possible with fdm printing and with this printer the speed the detail i was really excited so i started to use the slicing software downstairs on my computer this was all laid out really nicely really easy to use very beginner friendly as promised it allowed me to sort of slice stuff downstairs on my computer, send it up, and then I'd get a notification on my phone when it was done. Right, so I've got this printed, um, and I've actually printed out a second uh, building as well. But yeah, I am really, really impressed with the quality um, and the level of detail on this print. Um, one of the biggest concerns that I've always had with it is being able to see the layer lines, um, I'm, you know, I've looked at FDM printing from years gone by where the layer lines are really thick um, and it distracts away from whatever the object is printing. But this is, this is absolutely fantastic. I mean, obviously you can still see the layer lines. It's not, you know, they're not invisible. Uh, but I think compared to what I was expecting, this is, this is really, really nice. And the thing that I really like as well is the little tabs that the roof attaches to on the building. Uh, didn't need any cleaning up, any filing. The holes on the roof that the tabs go into didn't need any cleaner up or anything. They just slot straight on there. And that is that is good to go. I think the true test is going to be in a little bit where we start putting some paint on these and see how much of those layer lines show up, how distracting they are once they're painted. 
or if you can see them at all, you know, if, if, if you can put this on the table, I mean, I, I can put this down over here and look at that from here and that looks fine. For terrain, for tabletop stuff, this is fantastic. I'm really, really impressed with the speed and the detail on these prints. So get some more prints on the go and uh, start getting some paint down. Obviously these buildings come with roofs that you can just sort of slot on or off in case you do need to play inside them. For what I'm using them for, I'm not going to need that, so I'm going to glue the roofs on so that they're nice and secure, just using some super glue and activator for those. And while I was sat deciding what colours I was going to paint these up in, I was just sort of looking at them and once again just being really, really impressed with the level of detail, all the little rivets and bits of panelling and just all the little bits around these, especially the uh, panels with all the buttons and the screens and stuff on. Like the fact that it manages to capture each of those buttons on there without it looking like a mess is, is really, really impressive. It would be no surprise that I decided to prime it black, but it might be a surprise that when I put this cam down on the table, it's actually turned one of my lights off. For painting this up, I'm just gonna go with some nice simple techniques. I'm gonna give it an all over spray with a silver through an airbrush first to get that metallic down underneath. And then I'm gonna stipple on a color over the top, but very patchy so that it looks like the paint is sort of peeling away or chipping away, revealing the metallic underneath. Now I'm going with stippling instead of dry brushing because I want to try and avoid highlighting all of those layer lines because all that will do is emphasize them a lot more. And I want to try and hide them as best I can just by some simple painting techniques. Now I know that there's primers out there like filler primers that can help fill the gaps and I could have sat and sanded all this before, but if I'm honest, I didn't want to sand this. I wanted to sort of paint it up as is without any extra work, just to show you what you can do with this printer and with files like this. I feel like sometimes we focus too much on making everything look absolutely perfect. And the sort of nice relaxed painting experience of just chucking on colors and dirt and grime and painting something up as really rough and old and weathered uh, it was actually quite nice and, and it fit in with this building really, really well. I was pretty happy with the sort of blue and the metallics on there, but I decided to add some dirty down rust effects just to add in another color and to help exaggerate how sort of worn down and, and abandoned this building was. It's a very therapeutic way to paint is by painting something that is old and derelict and sort of run down and rusted or covered in moss or whatever, just because it's you don't really have to be careful. You don't have to paint in the lines. You don't have to be particularly careful or neat. You can just sort of chuck stuff on and it looks good. Once the majority of the building is done, it's time to pick out a couple of details, such as the light above the door, the sort of glowing part on the keypad, any cables that are left lying around. And it's at this point where it really starts to come together. You can get the majority done pretty quickly, but then adding in those final few details right at the end just ties it all together and makes it look a little bit more like an actual building and less like a little toy kit. A little bit less, not completely. A quick blast with the airbrush just to add a little bit of a glow and that was that bit of terrain done. So from completely printed to primed and then to painted up. I'm really really impressed with this. You could quite easily get away with just using this as is straight off the printer but taking that little bit of extra time to paint stuff in to add that detail on the table this is going to look fantastic. So I think I'm pretty impressed with this printer. Yeah, FDM printing, as I've said before, it's one of those things that I've kind of looked at. And if I'm completely honest, yeah, I've, I've always just sort of written it off as not really ideal for what I do with miniatures. But for terrain, and to be fair, stuff beyond this, I mean, I, I've I've seen files for things that I'm going to be printing out for little bits to have displayed around the, the studio. Uh, but specifically for terrain, that like the fact that I managed to get these three buildings printed up in like a day if I was doing them back to back, which I can do because I can just print stuff from my phone. Um, I can just send it via that. I can slice everything, pre-slice everything, that send it to my phone and then I can just send it to print from there. It is absolutely amazing. So yeah, if I'm printing these and then took no time to paint up really, the paint has hidden the majority of the sort of layer lines. Like, yes, obviously you can still see them, 
Um, more in some places than others, but when you're playing and these are on the table and you're not sat looking at them like, oh, look at that. You, you know, you, you're not gonna be able to see them. I'm very, very excited to do some more printing with this printer. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting a full table of this terrain, printed up, painted up, and having it as like an alternative, either Star Wars Legion terrain or Star Wars Shatterpoint terrain. It'll work for either, I think, looking at the scale of it, um, and just have it as alternatives to the official stuff. And now that I've done this, and I've printed up this terrain, it's just giving me ideas for what else I can do. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I just want to say a massive thank you to Anchor Maker for sending out the 3D printer. Absolutely fantastic. Check the links down again in the description for all the links to the printer and everything like that and see if you can beat yourself up an absolute bargain. Uh, thank you to Corbus Games Terrain for sending out the files for printing. Um, this terrain is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, thank you, you guys, for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about 3D printing and what you think about what I've managed to get out of this 3D printer. As I said, I'm pretty impressed, but let me know what you guys think. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it from me. My name is Josh, and until next time, enjoy your hobby.